Well, here's a fairly unusual start to a programme on survival. This is a pH meter. It's a fairly standard piece of laboratory equipment, but it's one that's invaluable for the teaching of one of the key concepts in chemistry. pH crops up all over the place in environmental chemistry, and it's equipment like this, with the electrode that does the measuring, that's used routinely in process chemistry and industry. If you want to teach chemistry, you really do need one of these. India, Jahangipuri, a slum district in the north of Delhi, but an industrious slum. This small factory is the visible sign of an initiative to solve India's lack of teaching facilities in chemistry. We all know the whole world is starved of resources. Education doesn't have the kind of support which it should have. But it's particularly acute in three-fourths of the world where the pressure of population, the rising aspirations, the greater ambitions, and all these are conspiring to create a situation which is uh, really very disturbing, in some ways very disgusting. I'm talking we as teachers. We are not delivering what we should be. Professor Krishnasane is trying to do something about this imbalance. He's building simple analytical instruments for use in schools and colleges. And the trick is to keep it simple and cheap. A very good general purpose pH meter will cost about 7, 800 rupees, which is 30 US dollars, against a commercial pH meter, which will cost 10 times as much. It's not only self-build that makes the equipment cheap. Recycling plays a big part. When we first made a pH meter, it was cheaper than the glass electrode which we were using. So it was an absurd situation, and I usually give the example of having a necktie which is more expensive than the suit. So we thought of looking for substitutes, and we tried many, uh, the tungsten in the burnt bulbs, the filament, and we tried stainless steel and so on. Then somebody had a bright idea, why not the carbon? And the source? Old batteries. This isn't only sound recycling, it's clever chemistry. The carbon rod conducts electricity and can be built into glass containers. But thanks to a worldwide patent, every carbon rod in every battery in the world is made to an exact specification. What you've got is an extremely uniform product for nothing. India, with her large population, has millions of school kids and college students. A vast human resource, the country's future. If chemistry is to play a part in that future, they need to be taught. Doing that with the funds available is a major resource problem. So what are they going to do about it? More recycling. You need equipment, keep your old fluorescent tubes and turn them into chemical glassware. Everything has been fashioned from discarded glass. What they're doing is making junk work for them. And more, it teaches an ethos, a way of life. Unless this culture comes in schools, that we train them to recycle, we train them to economize, we train them not to throw things down the drain, we train them to be safety conscious. You know, how are we going to expect them to be good citizens of the world tomorrow? Now that's what I call the chemistry of survival. And it's a million miles away from this next guy. Mm.